Yeah, thank you for the introduction. So first, I want to uh, acknowledge my uh, group members, uh, three of my uh, graduate students, uh, Chao Zhang, Jun uh, Ji Huang, and Ryan Kradiger. So the motivation uh, of this uh, study is to study like the, the, the pressure field within like a, a turbulent flow. Okay, as you know, like the pressure is it's a very important quantity for studying like fluid dynamics. For example, it's important for like uh, like the lift and drag of uh, aerodynamic body, and also it's important for like vibration and noise, and also even cavitation if the if the fluid is a, is a liquid, and uh, it's also of uh, uh, theoretical significance, such as uh, vortex dynamics. So the pressure is directly connected with the the pressure field is connected with the vorticity field, and also in terms of turbulence modeling is also very important. Okay, and uh, uh, for this, for our study, our focus is on like the uh, supersonic boundary layers. Okay, so for this uh, specific type of flow, uh, the pressure is, is important for, for example, like the vibrational loading uh, of a uh, flight vehicles, and uh, that that is the the wall pressure fluctuation. So if you talking about the, the pressure fluctuation away from the wall. So it's, it's very important for like the, the wind tunnel noise. So this is a, a sketch of you know, what's happening in a, in a noisy uh, supersonic wind tunnel. So you can see like there's a, there's a different type of noise that coming out of the wall, of the, of the tunnel wall. And this uh, noise will actually propagate into the test section and then influence your measurement. So it's very important to, uh, for us to understand you know, the, this, this pressure, the, the detailed spectrum, this pressure field within this, this wind tunnel. Okay. All right, so why uh, do we want to do like uh, calculations? Uh, because uh, so far we still have very limited data on, on the pressure field. Because it's, uh, the theory cannot predict the, the detailed spectrum of the pressure field. And uh, for experiment, okay, it's very important to get uh, measurement away from the wall especially in this high-speed uh, environment. So we do have to rely on like, uh, numerical simulations. A previous study of uh, the pressure field largely focused on the, the incompressible you know, pressure field. As you know, like the incompressible pressure field, the pressure is governed by the Poisson equation. But for supersonic flow, the pressure is actually governed by a, a wave equation. So you have a, a totally like a, a change in the type of you know, property of the pressure field. And also, previous study has not, uh, the, the previous simulation has not resolved the, the free spin uh, pressure noise. So this is another like, uniqueness of our uh, calculation. So the objective of this, of this, uh, of this uh, project is to you know, get a, a DNS database, which allows us to uh, study, like, have a detailed look at the, the pressure field, such as the, the statistical structure uh, properties of the pressure field, uh, and uh, also like the correlation between the vorticity and the pressure, as well as the the, uh, the free string acoustic radiation. All right, so uh, this is actually the, the focus of the of this project. So we are trying to build a, a, a DNS database that covers a wide range of uh, flow speed, a wide range of uh, wall temperature conditions, and a wide range of Reynolds numbers. So those are the typical kind of uh, like a snapshot of the, of the calculation. So we resolve both the, the, the hydrodynamic layer of the boundary layer, as well as the, the near acoustic field. So, so we get, you know, how, then we get a detailed idea how the pressure field, you know, varies as you move away from the wall uh, up to the free stream. And, uh, and then we, we can use this to do like a, a detailed analysis. Okay. All right. So why, why uh, do we need uh, blue waters? So for this uh, type of calculation, we do need a, a, la a large number of mesh points in order to resolve this uh, detailed uh, turbulent structures. And uh, we also need like, the, the large domain size so that to accommodate enough like, uh, uh, large scale turbulent structures so that to, to get a, stati a statistical significant results. And, uh, and also we need a, a large number of time steps for getting like some of the quantities such as the spectrum, we need a, a significant amount of time steps. So this uh, table gives you like an idea of the, 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 the typical size of our calculation. So in, in the proposal, we propose like uh, up to like a, a Reynolds number, the common number of uh, 2,000. 
okay, which has not been done uh, before. And uh, it actually requires like a, a total number of match points of eight billion. And uh, the, a single like a flow data actually uh, has a size of uh, 320 gigabytes. So it's a, it's a huge calculation. So we do need like uh, this uh, petal scale uh, computational power of blue waters for us to fulfill the goal. Okay, so that's why we, we need uh, this, this blue water. Okay, so the next, uh, the rest of my talk, I'll first give you like, a, a sketch of our uh, DNS methodology and also our like, software uh, structure. And then I will give you some uh, representative uh, results and then uh, summary and the future work. All right, so here we are talking about uh, uh, DNS of uh, supersonic flows. So DNS supersonic flow is quite different from incompressible flow. So incompressible flow usually use a spectral method, but for a supersonic flow, you cannot do that because of the shock waves, which will crash your code. So we, we do have to deal with uh, shock waves, so that's one of the strategy. In the meantime, we have to capture the, the small scales, okay? So instead of a spectral method, we typically use a, a finite difference method, okay? So that's uh, one big difference. Another difference is like uh, previous studies uh, typically focus on like uh, channel flows or, or pipe flows, which you have two periodic directions. Then you can easily you know, impose a boundary condition. But for uh, a boundary layer, you, you only have like one homogeneous direction. So you have to deal with the inflow condition. You have to deal with the, uh, you have to have a, a mechanism to, to give you like a continuous inflow. Okay. So, to, to tackle these uh, challenges, we, we, we use a, a so-called a, a hybrid uh, method. So we have a winnow, a weighted essentially non oscillatory scheme that can capture shock, shock waves. And then we also have a central difference which can, use, uh, which can be used to capture these small scale uh, turbulent structures. And those are the actual sketch of the, of the winnow method. And then we rely on like two mechanisms to actually uh, switch back and forth we can use a numerical shock sensor, like a, a, a window limiter, which can like, turn on and turn off, like window adaptation. And also we can use a, a physical shock sensor, so which kind of identify the, the region of, of shock wave, as well as the region of turbulence. Okay, so that's, that's the idea of our uh, scheme. And then in terms of the inflow conditions, we have uh, two, two ways. One is to use uh, the rescaling, uh, recycling method, as in the left figure. And then we also have a digital filtering method, which is on the right. So both methods can give us continuous uh, inflow, turbulence inflow, which you know, can, can deal with the inhomogeneity in the, in the streamwise direction. Okay, so, in, so we have chosen our method, that then this is uh, how we uh, develop our code. So we, we solved like the, the Navier-Stokes equation. And then uh, for, the, for the convective uh, flux, we used the hybrid uh, window and the central difference method. For the, for the viscous term, we used uh, the central difference. And then we, we have different subroutines or, or modules which, which deal with different terms in the, in the governing equation. And then we have an explicit uh, time integrator like RK3 which can, can like involve the, the flow field uh, with respect to time, okay? And uh, we use a, 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 like a high performance Fortran to, 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 to do the coding. And then, so far, the, the code is still like parallel, you know, purely MPI only. But we are working on like make it a, a hybrid, like open MP, uh, MPI kind of architecture. And then we use a, a parallel I.O., okay, with like a, a F, HDF5, okay? To, to deal with the data uh, input and output. Okay, and this is uh, give you the, the, the idea of how we do like the, the domain decomposition. So we do like a, a, like a 2D uh, domain decomposition. So we, we only decompose in the, in the stream-wise and span-wise uh, directions, okay? Because we usually want to get the, the boundary profile, so we want the profile to, to lie on a, a single processor. So we didn't have an you know, impose, uh, like decompose on the, on the third dimension. And then uh, for, the, for this uh, 2D uh, pencil, we, we use a halo exchange. So we use a finite difference method. So we only have a, a finite kind of depth of this, this halo. And then this needs to be changed, exchanged at each uh, time step. 
And uh, here uh, is some uh, detailed like, uh, profiling, like the breakdown of uh, how much time you know, each portion of the, of the code actually spent. Okay. So, so here, uh, this is a breakdown. But to summarize, we, so at a, at a relatively uh, smaller mesh, okay, so we, we, we actually more than 90% of the time is, is spent on like, doing the calculation. Okay. And then about like, 3% was for, for I.O. So this, this is a, a kind of a, a calculation done like in like a, a 250 XD node on, on the blue waters. However, if we further increase the, you know, the, the, the data size, so this has been increased by four times, okay, the mesh size. And then we can see like how it changes. So the, 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 the calculation time, on, on like 80%. And then we have a, a, a significant increase in the, in the I.O. time, okay. So this is uh, give you the rough idea uh, the, how the solver does uh, at different subroutines, and then we look at uh, we, we do like a, a strong and weak scaling of the of the solver. So the left figure is the, is the strong scaling. Okay. So essentially, I the, the 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 amount of calculation is fixed. I increase the number of cores and then see how the how the time changes, and then you can see like uh, the the code does pretty well. Okay, up to like about 500 nodes. And then up to like 1,000, it sees like some kind of a deterioration. Okay, the performance deteriorated a little bit. And uh, for the weak scaling, this is uh, how, how it looks. Okay. And then we uh, further uh, kind of decompose the, the time into like the computation time only. Okay. So if we only account for the time spent on calculation, so this is the, the performance. It looks uh, much better. So in addition to like uh, doing like a profiling at the at the blue water, we also did it some at other other machines, like like the Air Force machines. Okay. So you see like in all of these machines, it, it actually scales uh, pretty well. Okay. For the blue water in particular, it's up to 1,000 XC nodes. It's, there's no no issue. Okay. Which means like this uh, finite difference method as well as the, the inflow method actually scales pretty well. Okay. For this for this code. And then, so then the reason why this uh, this deteriorate actually was caused, I think, it's largely by the by the I/O. Okay, so this is uh, 500 nodes. The I/O is like about five minutes. Okay, and then you can see like a, a huge increase in the I/O time. So this is kind of largely account for like why you know we we have this uh, deterioration. But we try to work with the the blue water team to kind of trying to fix this this problem. All right, so last I will give you some representative uh, results, so how we make use of the, of the data. So one thing is like we can look at the, the global uh, pressure structure. So those are the, the spatial correlation of the, of the pressure uh, signals, okay? This is a, a Mach 6, uh, like a Mach 6 uh, turbulent bound layer. And uh, this, uh, at, at a relatively low Reynolds number. And uh, this, you can see like the structure, kind of how it varies away from the wall. In the free stream, you can see like this uh, preferred kind of structure, which is quite similar to the instantaneous visualization. So this is a, a movie shows how the, the pressure signal, okay? So we have the, the colored contour, which shows the vorticity, the contour vorticity, shows you like the turbulent structures. And then we have this gray contours, which is the gradient of density, which gives you the, the idea of, the, of the, the pressure, the free stream acoustic pressure radiated from the, the boundary layer, okay? We can get a, a very detailed view of, the, of this type of structures. And uh, we can also look at uh, the space-time uh, correlation, how that uh, like a, a particular like pressure structure evolves or propagate, okay, within the, within the domain, okay? So it, has, it can be, uh, this, is, uh, this shows you like the propagation uh, effect. So as a function of wall normal distance, okay? You can see like within the boundary layer, the, the pressure structure actually propagate with a similar speed at the, at the local um, velocity. And then once you get to the free stream, you can see like there's a, a huge e decrease. So it's actually, in the free stream, the, the pressure propagate with a, with a slower speed than the, the, the free stream velocity, which uh, the Taylor's hypothesis is not accurate in the free stream. So those gives you like the idea of the evolution of the, of the pressure structure. How you know that that the the pressure structure uh, decorrelate with, with itself at, at the function of 
uh, distance, stream-wise separation, you can see that the structure does involve, you know, as as as, as a as, as a stream-wise kind of spacing. And la lastly, we can also look at you know the, the mechanism for like the free stream pressure generation. So we can look at different source terms, okay, within the boundary layer. So this acoustic source can account for the the pressure uh, kind of effect in the free stream. Okay, so here is the, 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 the summary. So we, we, we are trying to, uh, in this project, we are trying to uh, develop like a, a DNS database of supersonic turbulent boundary layers that can cover like a wide range of Mach number and wall temperature and, uh, and the Reynolds number, okay? And uh, this DNS database can be used to study the pressure uh, structures and also to look at the, the free stream acoustic radiation. And uh, the DNS code is, is currently being modernized, okay, to kind of make it efficient at the petascale kind of type of calculation. So we have done like a, a detailed uh, a profiling and a, a scalability analysis, and we have made it uh, parallel I.O. so that to improve the I.O. efficiency. But further work needs to be done for the, for the I.O. portion. And then we also try working on uh, hybrid the, the MPI and open MP. So, uh, so the future work is, is like uh, get the, the data at high Reynolds number up to like 2000. And then uh, we can, we'll continue working on like hybrid and uh, hybridization of the, of the open MP, MPI method. And, and then maybe a, a third kind of, so right now we have 2D pencil decomposition. We, we, we might also introduce a 3D pencil decomposition, okay? So this is a, kind of a, a sketch like uh, uh, that my student Ryan is, is working on to make it hybrid, okay, a code. So, so this is a, a 2D pencil, and then for each pencil, it's like a, a long, tall kind of shape. And then we can use the different stress in, in the third dimension to kind of speed up, further speed up the, the code. Okay. Lastly, I want to uh, acknowledge like uh, our uh, collaborator, uh, Milan uh, Chaudhary as well as the, the funding from uh, the Air Force and, uh, and NASA, as well as the, the computational time, okay, support from the, the Blue Waters. And uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs>